Last General Conference, I was called by President Monson to be the new Young Women General President. As I stood in the presence of a prophet of God and was given that sacred trust, I pledged that I would serve with all my heart, might, mind, and strength. Prior to this calling, I had a small plate inscribed with a model that read, I can do hard things. That little plate bearing that simple motto gave me courage. But now, if I could change that motto, it would read, In the strength of the Lord, I can do all things. It is on that strength that I rely today as I stand at this sacred pulpit. Last April, two days after General Conference, we held our first meeting as a newly sustained presidency. We hiked to the top of Ensign Peak, and as we looked on the valley below, we saw the temple with Angel Moroni shining in the sun. For each of us, it was clear the vision for our presidency was the temple, and our responsibility was also clear. We must help prepare every young woman to be worthy to make and keep sacred covenants and receive the ordinances of the temple. The temple is the reason for everything we do in the Church. The temple was the reason our pioneer ancestors left their established homes and came west. It was the reason they suffered privation and even death. Temple covenants were the reason that although babies were buried along the way, those pioneers could sing, Come, come, ye saints, no toil nor labor fear, but with joy wend your way. Some lost everything, but came into the valley with everything, really. Temple ordinances, sacred covenants, and the promise of eternal life together as families. Just two days after the Saints arrived in the Salt Lake Valley, Brigham Young and his associates hiked Ensign Peak. Atop that peak, they unfurled a banner, a yellow bandana tied to a walking stick, which symbolized an ensign or a standard to the nations. The Saints were to be the light, the standard. Last April, atop Ensign Peak, we three women also unfurled a banner which we made from a walking stick and a gold Peruvian shawl. It was our ensign, our standard to the nations, our banner calling for a return to virtue. Virtue is a prerequisite to entering the Lord's holy temples and to receiving the Spirit's guidance. Virtue is a pattern of thought and behavior based on high moral standards. It encompasses chastity, and moral purity. Virtue begins in the heart and in the mind. It is nurtured in the home. It is the accumulation of thousands of small decisions and actions. Virtue is a word we don't hear very often in today's society, but the Latin root word is virtus, means strength. Virtuous women and men possess a quiet dignity and inner strength. They are confident because they are worthy to receive and be guided by the Holy Ghost. President Monson has counseled, You be the one to make a stand for right, even if you stand alone. Have the moral courage to be a light for others to follow. There is no friendship more valuable than your own clear conscience, your own moral cleanliness. And what a glorious feeling it is to know that you stand in your appointed place clean and with the confidence that you are worthy to do so. Could it be that we have been slowly desensitized into thinking that high moral standards are old-fashioned and not relevant or important in today's society? As Elder Hales has just reminded us, Lahontai in the Book of Mormon was a well-positioned on the top of a mountain. He and those he led were fixed in their minds with a determined resolution that they would not come down from the mount. It only took the deceitful Amalekiah four tries, each one more bold than the previous, to get Lahontai to come down off the mount. And then, having embraced Amalekiah's false promises, Lahontai was poisoned by degrees until he died. Not just poisoned but by degrees. 
Could it be that this may be happening today? Could it be that first we tolerate, then accept, and eventually embrace the vice that surrounds us? Could it be that we have been deceived by false role models and persuasive media messages that cause us to forget our divine identity? Are we, too, being poisoned by degrees? Could it be? What could be more deceptive than to entice the youth of this noble generation to do nothing or to be busy ever texting but never coming to a knowledge of the truths <laughs> that are contained in a book that was written for you and your day by prophets of God, the Book of Mormon? What could be more deceptive than to entice women, young and old, you and me, to be so involved in ourselves, our looks, our clothes, our body shape and size, that we lose sight of our divine identity and our ability to change the world through our virtuous influence. What could be more deceptive than to entice men, young and old, holding the holy priesthood of God, to view seductive pornography and thus focus on the flesh instead of faith, and be consumers of vice rather than guardians of virtue. The Book of Mormon relates the story of 2,000 young heroes whose virtue and purity gave them the strength to defend their parents' covenants and their family's faith. Their virtue and commitment to be true at all times changed the world.